sadly, my air conditioner broke down in the middle of night not long ago. It's very common here in Malaysia to have ceiling fan as secondary cooling device. I got to make do with the ceiling fan for a night. In order to get this problem solved, first you need the pressure gauge. This single manifold pressure gauge is a good enough tool to get my problem solved. It comes with the main body. These are the blank inlet meant for keeping the other end of the hose for storage purpose, preventing sand particles gets into the hose and eventually contaminate the compressor. The one on the left are meant for taking the pressure while the one down here for charging the refrigerant from the tank. These holes provided are meant for R410A refrigerant as stated here, as printed on these holes. The thread line diameter is unique for checking valve or service valve. It comes with an adapter in case the refrigerant bottle does not have the correct thread. A hook will be handy to help hang the gauge around at the back while charging the refrigerant. I will fix it here, hand tighten it first, followed by using a 6 inch variable wrench. Only hand tighten this hose onto the gauge and off we go. You do not want to over tighten the holes. They are rubber gasket, help prevent leakage. This recording helps me to refer to in the future. I do not know when I will have another total lockdown. It is certain that I need to check the refrigerant pressure once every 15 months. Check data plate again here if it uses the correct refrigerant. I have switched on the AC and has set it at 25 degrees Celsius running at auto mode for almost 5 minutes already. It helps to identify which unit it belongs to as well as taking a stable reading. Pump size two-way screwdriver like this is really useful in tight spaces. Screw here to remove the cover, then slide the cover downwards and pull it out. That only the blue holes fits the service valve to check the refrigerant pressure using the left inlet. Wear a non-penetrating glove to prevent frostbite. A goggle to protect your eye. Safety first. Hand tighten the brass fitting all the way in until there is a reading from the gauge. Any reading in the outmost scale less than 118 to 200 PSI are considered low in R410 refrigerant pressure. You might need this converter if your holes are not meant for R410A refrigerant. I choose a higher concentration brand of gas for better cooling efficiency. I will then turn this green valve slightly over a quarter turn. Topping up the R410A liquid requires the bottle to be turned upside down. Here we go. It's getting dark out here. I've perched the hose just now, allowing the refrigerant to push the air out from the hose by loosening the hose connector slightly. I need to turn on and off this gauge repeatedly with great patience from now on. Wait for 30 seconds interval in each cycle for the pressure to stabilize and check if its reading is between 117 to 120 PSI. Charging the compressor by turning the knob counterclockwise by a quarter turn and off as one cycle. Overcharging the compressor risks shortening the lifespan. The compressor will cut off if the pressure exceeded 150 PSI. Do not overcharge your compressor. You got to do it slowly you got to charge this refrigerant slowly turning on clock counterclockwise and clockwise and counterclockwise and wait for 30 seconds in each interval it takes roughly 30 minutes for the pressure to stabilize at 118 psi then loosen the charging hose from the service valve and tighten the brass cover Tighten the 
screw securing the plastic cover back into its position and then remember to close the valve at the refrigerant tank not shown in the video then you can disconnect all the holes that's all for this recording I appreciate your support by subscribing to my channel press the bell button to get notified and please like my video I do not need to sleep in a hot room for another night